Hey guys, this is Casey Foster from netcodeguides.com doing a demo review here for BDK on his DE Cash matchmaking game. Um, you have a pretty good little write up of your gameplay here. Hello, Neko Guides. This is my first time submitting a demo review. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, as a, I'm a rifler and it differs from time to time how consistent I can be. I sometimes play aggressive. We actually just released a video about consistency, so check that out. Uh, I sometimes play aggressive, maybe three rounds in one game on CT side of cash. Other times I just try to anchor a site, just lurk somewhere. On T side, I can be very aggressive. After the smokes are down, I'm trying to go for entry frags. I try to do a few solo queue plays as well sometimes. I've seen, I've, it's seen one time only in the CT side of this map where I go for a main, but it was empty and I called the info, but we still managed to lose around on the B side, which I was playing most of the time. You can see me throwing flashes on a thing on the wall, trying to time them exactly when we come in. What I have, what I have the most struggles with is peeking out from my position to the guy in vent room when an enemy has rushed that place. I always find myself lacking aim and kills in this situation. So I have a few things to say about pretty much obviously I've watched this demo now a few times. I have a few things to say about what you just said. Uh, but here on the first round that we actually have something to commentate on because you guys lost pistol round and then yeah, you know, just basically got outgunned the next few rounds. So you've actually done this a few times um you throw this smoke um you it, it's basically smoking off b main um but what happens is it creates a wall for them um they're able to walk straight into checkers at that point with nobody being able to see a main because there was a smoke there and then you actually threw your molotov into the smoke which extinguishes um, your your Molotov. So one thing that you probably want to start doing is throwing a deeper smoke off of that wall. Um, you can th basically just run and throw it off of that same spot that you threw it and it will pop um, a little bit deeper into B main to the right of the boxes inside of B main and that will block them off from completely going past the smoke or you basically just look on the other side. I mean, obviously they can run through the smoke, but um, it doesn't create them a wall to basically get into checker room and clear checker room relatively easily. All right, and here we are on a, they basically rush B kind of. Um, this is another thing you've kind of been doing the this match. Um, you play this spot a lot. This is pretty much the default spot, default plan spot. Um, pretty much there's always going to be someone in your spot and you play it a lot. Um, they basically just throw a flash through checkers and just rush into the site. Now, unfortunately, you have not peaked a main. You were not spotting into a main. You were not spotting checkers. You're basically just hiding in the site. And you're not gaining any information. And Counter-Strike is a very informational kind of game. You have to be finding out where the bad guys are. Even if you're not fighting them, you just still have to be able to get this information. And simply, you could have just been leak looking into B main. It's a relatively tough shot for them to just rush you, or uh, sorry, just one shot you from B main when you're at the spot that you're in. You can basically just peek in and out and see if they're crossing in, a, in B main. And unfortunately, they've just run into the site and you kind of saw that dude there on the left, but you didn't and they basically just get in your face and kill you because you had no clue that they were there. Um, the next thing is playing off of your teammates. So obviously this is a matchmaking game. Your communication may not be the best, but you basically, you know, if he's not communicating with you, you have to take it upon yourself to play based on where this guy's playing. So if he was here in CT spawn, he's obviously not peeking into B main. He's not going to be of much help to you um, if you're playing that um, passive spot. So. The next thing I'm going to talk about is just getting that information. So getting that, I'm going to let this play out actually, just getting that information, all it would have taken was just you just to shoulder peek in and out basically from behind that box um, and look into B main. And once you see them, then you can react and say, hey guys, some guys have crossed the checkered and smoked them off or something, throw a smoke in front of checkered, um, whatever you may do. But pigeoning or turtling in the site, <laughs> pigeoning, turtling in the site is going to make it relatively tough for you to try and win that without getting any information and just getting surprised as to where they're at. So there's better positions. Um, you can play at headshot. I, I, I talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on in this uh, demo review, but I would like to see you play headshot because it's an amazing spot. 
uh, you have uh, you have a good chance of getting a kill, then you have a great place to fall back to, um, and you'll be able to change your position. Um, this round is actually... Um, oh yeah, you throw, the, you throw that smoke again on this round, so let's go ahead and fast forward to this, and you'll see why... Oh shoot, oh shoot, okay. Um, so you're here actually at headshot, and... Um, you throw the smoke again. So you'll see a perfect example here of what that smoke does. So that dude right there just crossed into checkered. He cleared it. Uh, you do the smoke. He, you basically created a wall for them to get in there. This other dude goes to checkered and he runs and jumps across and you had no gun out. Uh, that could have been a free frag, but you know, random timing really. But that is a perfect example of why that smoke isn't good. And if you would have thrown the deep smoke, that dude wouldn't have been there um, you would have been delaying their strategy, even, you know, their their execute um, even longer, basically, if you would have just thrown a deeper smoke into B main, um, and you can play on the on the headshot spot right here to your left and look into B main, and when they try and cross, you can get a few shots on them and then fall back to site, changing your position. Um, so keep that in mind going forward. Use you know your equipment to your advantage, and um, you have to know the right you know the the better smokes, uh, or sorry, the right smokes and flashes. Um, for the game and your position that you're playing. All right, and here we are um, on a gun round. You've thrown that smoke again, and this is one thing that you talked about in your description. You said, I have a hard time flashing them and peeking them, you know, at the right times. So what you've just thrown was a flash based on, you know, the sound that's going on. They're throwing smokes, they're throwing flashes. You basically just burned a flash and... You're peeking, you know, off of the flash, you know, a good second or two, probably after the flash popped. If it didn't perfectly full white somebody, you probably would not be shooting at anybody that's blind at this point. So, um, we'll we'll see what happens here in a second. Um, you you you're you're playing the same way again. You're not getting any information. Like you weren't peeking to the right side of this box, um, and you don't you get basically surprised by this guy here. Obviously, you get him flashed. And he gets some shots off on you, but he really wasn't full flashed. So what you threw was basically just a flash off of what's going on in, in the round. I would like you to see, I would like to see you throw a flash based on what's going on in the round. And if you were just getting some information when they're running into the site, seeing, okay, one's crossed the checkered, one is pushing me on the right, then throwing a flash, you're going to have a much better chance. Obviously, you got the kill, right? But you would have had a much better chance like throughout the entire game or the next time you play cash. You'll have a much better you'll have a much better success rate throwing a reactionary flash based on what they're doing. You're basically reacting to what they're doing, and you're you know that you're going to flash somebody. You're not just burning a flash on somebody or burning a flash on nobody and then peeking and saying, oh, "Okay, there's nobody here," and then you know getting surprised, you know, or whatever. So, two things: you threw that bad smoke that round. You know, get a better smoke for that, and then. Try and get as much information in the round as you can. Listen to what's going on. Listen for how many footsteps. Try and get, you know, peek into B main. Um, use your teammate to maybe spot from upper or something and then f flash based on what he sees. Uh, but if you're not playing with your teammate, obviously, and your communication isn't the best, you need to be peeking yourself. You need to be getting that information. You need to be finding out where these bad guys are and going based off of what you see. All right, and we're actually here on one of the last rounds. This match, uh, you guys win pretty easily. Wasn't really a whole lot to commentate on, but you got an A pick. Your teammates got another kill somewhere else, and now you knew where that op was. Now you have to you have to keep in mind what gun this guy has in his hand. He has an op, and he's at quad. You had a teammate coming out of door, and you kind of expected him to just kill this guy at quad with an op, and it it costs you your life because he kind of just messes around with him at door, gets all kinds of time to rotate. You're, there's another dude coming up highway. So one of the topics I want to talk about, this was actually not hap this was actually happening a lot in the game, um, is you're not putting yourself in positions to get trade frags. Um, in this situation, worst case scenario, he gets one of you guys, but he's definitely not going to kill both of you with an op if you guys push him and use teamwork and use your guys' you know, guns to your advantage. You guys have AKs, he has an op, he can really only op one of you guys at a time, maybe pull out his pistol and potentially get the second kill, but pushing him together is your best chance of winning this round. Or getting that kill on the, the guy here at quad, obviously. Um, and you basically take a whole bunch of time to try and push this guy. You didn't fight with your teammate. 
and you get shot in the back here by the dude coming up connector. So I'm going to let this demo play out and just talk about a few things here. Um, so basically to recap, your CT side B play, you have to be getting information. Um, you have to be peeking more. You have to be throwing at better smokes. Um, and you need to be reacting. Uh, you need to be throwing reactionary flashes, counter flashes is what they're really called. So the team is the team. The T's are going to be flashing through the window, flashing off the wall. And then they're going to be hitting the site, expecting you guys to be flashed by these flashes. And then you basically need to be counter flashing. You need to be re throwing return flashes off of the walls or whatever, um, in reaction to what they're doing. Um, the next thing would be you need to play off your teammates a little bit better. Um, it's matchmaking. Your communication really isn't going to be the best. Um, if you want to start, you know, learning a little bit more about team play and getting more into a team team environment, you know, try out ESCA or Face It or Sevo Pugs, you know, whatever it may be. Um, those are much better. They're, you're going to play against better players. You're going to, Generally speaking, the players are going to be a little bit more team oriented than matchmaking, and you're going to have better communication. Um, give those a shot. Uh, the next thing is. It kind of goes with the playing off your teammate thing, but on T side, you are not getting yourself into situations to get trade frags. Um, so that dude just got an op kill right there. You had, you know, a free a free frag on him basically after he shot his op because he has to pull out a pistol or try and rescope with his op. You end up getting the kill, um, but you could have made that a lot a lot a lot easier uh, by just killing him as soon as he shot your teammate. That would that's what's called the trade frag. Uh, the next thing, and obviously this is you've not been playing the game very long, but Based on your rank, you know, and watching the demo, I can see that your aim, um, you know, isn't really the best. Uh, you tend to shoot while moving a lot. Um, you tend to stay, I don't know if you're letting go of strafe or if you are still holding strafe when you shoot, but the guns in this game are fairly inaccurate, actually really inaccurate when you're moving and shooting at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into a server real quick. Uh, I actually talked about this in my last demo, uh, but I want to show something I want to explain it a little bit better uh, for you in this video, um, basically showing you how to increase the uh, speed in which you can shoot again, basically after your recoil has reset. So let's jump on a server. All right, and here we are on the AIM map. Uh, it's called AIM Bots. Uh, I can link it in the description of this video, but basically what it is is just spawn some bots and you can control where they're at and, you know, what if they have head armor, stuff like that, um, and it respawns the bots. It's basically just a good way to work on your aim and, you know, uh, practice the guns that are all around here and stuff. So the thing that I saw you doing a lot was doing this. You were, you were, you were doing, you know, the counter strafing job well, but you were strafing and then shooting at the same time. And you can see basically while moving how inaccurate these bullets are. I'm, I'm, I'm actually counter strafing because it's, it's kind of like second nature for me to do it, but I'm trying to do it on purpose to show you what's happening when you're moving and shooting. Um, you can show, you can see here in the top left corner of my screen, um, it's called show POS. It shows your position on the map. And one thing you need to pay attention to is a thing at the bottom. It's called velocity. It shows how fast you're moving. 255 is the max speed with a rifle. Knife is 250 or sorry, 225 with a rifle. And basically, when you're at vo zero velocity, your bullets are perfectly accurate. And what you want to do is basically shoot. You know, the lower the velocity, the more accurate bullets are going to be. Generally speaking, you only want to shoot when your velocity is at zero or relatively low. And what you do to do that is counter strafe. So if you're strafing with D, you're going to press A, and it's going to stop you quicker than if you were just pressing D like this and then letting go. You saw how the velocity slowed down very slowly versus I'm strafing the side here and I just press right and it stops my velocity immediately. Um, that's what you need to do to make sure that your bullets are going to be accurate versus shooting and moving at the same time and your bullets are going to be inaccurate. Um, so that was something you were doing in your demo a lot is you were shooting while moving. Um, it's something that takes a lot of practice, but you basically will be able to get to the point where you can do this without even thinking and it's pretty much second nature and it feels natural to you to shoot and then counter strafe like so obviously you can see my velocity goes down to you know pretty much zero just for a split second enough time for me to shoot accurately with this gun um that's something you'll need to work on and you'll have much better success rate shooting at people um and it will also allow you one of the things that you talked about in your in your little uh your little thing basically saying one of the things you need to work on is shooting at that player when peeking out of your spot that will allow you to do it because what you were doing for example was peeking around this corner and you were you were shooting while you were still moving like this so you were you were missing him like 
pretty bad. So one of the things you can practice coming around the corner, I'll just try and shoot over there, is coming around the corner and, and hitting the counter strafe button to stop quickly and your bullets are going to be accurate and then you can shoot at them and, and then you can come back um, into your spot. Sorry, like come back to hiding. So that's uh, probably the, ne the other thing you need to work on. Obviously, like I said, it takes a really long time to master this, but you basically want, you will get to a point where it, it is second nature to you. You won't even think about this anymore. So, um, BDK, I hope this demo review helped you a lot. Um, I'll put the link to this map in the description and um, hope you enjoyed the demo review and uh, hope you, everybody else that watched this demo review, you know, can learn something, something from this as well. Even if you're better than him or not better than him, you will still be able to pick up something um, from this demo review. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks guys.